Thunder Community. Hey, this is Mike Stevens. Welcome everyone to Afternoon Astonishments from Conjurer Community, the world's best magic club. This is a show where we dive into mind-blowing magic performed by the world's top magicians. I'm here today with Alexander Slemmer. Hey, Alex. Hey, how's it going, Mike? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. And Mr. Adam Grace. What is up? And none other than Steve Barcelona. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Afternoon Astonishments. And today we're going to take a look at the magic of David Regal. Again, we're doing a lot of David um, Regal le lately, and he's a, there's a lot of him to go around. What, what, what can you say? He's a pretty prolific guy. He's got a lot of magic and a lot of really great magic. And uh, we're going to start with something that's really like a quick, uh, great trick that gets to the point and it's something i you know if you were interested in doing magic this is one i think that most people would probably want to do right away it's a good solid piece of magic that's all self-contained and it gets it done in my opinion let's check it out three card monty turns out it's a ripoff did you know that no it is it is and you know people don't stop to think they get caught up in the game of it they want to play they want to win they forget the reason you lose and it's a simple reason three card monty there's three objects three card monty how many eyes do we have we don't have three we have two we have two eyes but there's three objects how could we possibly even stand a, a chance of winning that's why the new modern Monty you see played in the streets of New York, it's called Two Card Monty, matches the number of eyes you have. Can everyone see this? The, my chat box is over one of the cards, but you can see it. Is that all right? I can see. It's two still, eyes cars. It's still the same basic idea. You follow the lady. The idea is to follow the lady, not the Joker, the lady. Follow the lady, you're going to win. You don't follow the lady, you lose. But because you just have two eyes, everyone feels much more comfortable betting you know, people are catching on to three card monty this one they're still lambs to the slaughter here's what they don't know well they always mix up the cards first what people don't realize is when the cards are in motion the brain gets confused I i'm going to show you what i mean the cards get in motion it gets turned over that's a little bit of motion right hey. that is all well well here i'm gonna hmm huh? I'm, gonna mix up. I'm gonna mix it up again because now you know too much <laughs> Man, too much. Well, no, I started doing the second phase instead of the first. That's that's a mistake. That's no good. Uh, so, okay, here's a little bit of motion, but now here's a lot of motion. Oh, and that lot of motion, that's where you get confused. A lot of mm -hmm. people think that's the queen. No, no, no. That's the Joker. Uh, the queen's over there. I told you it gets complicated. It's not my fault. It's no one's fault. It's just when these cards are in motion, it's it's a principle of, of optics of science here. I'm gonna show you again. This time, I'll keep it even simpler. But you're going to see motion, and the motion's going to confuse you. Okay, watch. I'll go very slowly. Look. Is everyone watching? Look. Very slowly. Follow the queen. I'm going to give you helpful advice with my head motion. Did you follow it? It's hard to follow because the joker's over here and the queen's over here. I know. Nothing's where it's supposed to be. Isn't that annoying? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, <laughs> to, prove, to prove to you that the eyes cannot follow an object in motion, I'll use one finger. One, this is not sleight of hand if I'm using one finger. Look, one, oh, it's hard to turn over one finger, but I'm doing it for you. This is love. Oh, one, look, one finger, one finger. Oh, uh, I have to use my thumb, an interposing thumb, but that's it. Oh, oh that hurt. Oh. It looks like you follow that. No, they're in motion. Yeah, the joker's here. Queen's there. Nothing's where it's supposed to be. I apologize. That's called two card Monty. A lot of stuff happening there. <laughs> it's really good. It's just so fun. And he's fun. I I, I love when he presents magic because he just goes uh, he goes from very serious to very absurd and everything in between. And it's it's fun to watch. It's so, fun to watch. Uh, let's do a little quick. Yeah, you're right. He is. He really is, man. He's He's got it down. He's got that that persona that's well. He's always a little ahead of you, but but uh, you you always feel like you're in safe hands with Regal. Like you know you're going to get a really good show, and you're going to get like. And it was actually kind of cool to see him kind of mess up that 
that first phase there and be like, oh, whoops, I'm doing the wrong phase for you guys. Like and then our afternoon astonishments. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you're with a group of magicians, it's you're, you know, we understand what that means. What if you're, you know, I did the wrong phase. We understand what that means. But that he would never do that. I don't think it's from, from the magic for a second. No, no, he didn't. He handled it like a pro. He always, he always is just a pro, consummate pro. So this next thing is uh, a little bit spooky. It's well, it's Halloween. Good. It's Halloween. Well, it's, it's kind of appropriate, right? It's it's a little bit different, and uh, I remember this one fooling me really bad. And there's something different going on here. If you're even familiar with this kind of magic, this is so different. It probably will fool you, even if you are familiar with this kind of magic, unless you know the specific thing that David's doing here. Really cool, and again, spooky. <laughs> Let's check it out. So uh, let's do a little quiz. Who's on a dollar bill? I'm going to hold it down. Anyone know? Who's the president on the dollar bill? Um, um, Washington. George Washington. Washington. Thank you. And fun facts. I mean, we all learned about George Washington when we were like, and you can look at this, when we were uh, in elementary school. What are some of the fun facts? Like he could never tell a lie. That's very good. Cut down the cherry tree. Good. Uh, wooden teeth. Excellent. And when they buried him, he wasn't quite dead, right? Oh, you didn't know that one? Yeah, when they buried Washington, he wasn't quite dead. They didn't teach you that? What school system was this? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's still a little bit, they say, of George's life energy in a bill. And sometimes, sometimes you can call to George, and you'll see a little bit of that life energy in action. Should we give, give that a try? Okay, hold on. Let me just balance it there. George. George, are you there? Are you there, George? Oh, <clears throat> was that was that me? Uh, did the air do that? Oh, okay, let's try. Let's try it like this. Make a little tent. Are you there, George? Are you there, George? Oh, is it George? George, <gasps> that's a little nuts. Here, you can look at this. Would you like to look at it? Here, let's let's this. Let's, let's some energy. What? Can you see the bill as it follows my hand? I know, that's crazy. You can look at it. You can look at it. In fact, and they do examine it, and they bring it back. Okay, let's try and trap some of that, that energy in George. You stay there, George. Is there nothing under here? Nothing under here. Here we go. Nothing. Nothing. George? Oh, that hand does it. Oh, that hand does it. It can even go in the wrong direction. Hey, George. Oh! Let's do test conditions here. Test conditions. Uh, I haven't done this trick in so long. I forgot how much I enjoy it. A glass. You can see it. Right? Yes. No way in, no way out. George, are you there? Please tell me if you see George move. Are you, are you there, George? Can you hear us, George? Do you see, anyone seeing George move? Anyone? Eventually, they tell me they're seeing him move. I go, oh, whoa. Look at oh. that. Whoa. 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 What's going on? George, George, what? Oh, this is crazy. This is He's just sort of in the middle there. I got to get a better look. <laughs> I come out and I look. I sit with the audience. And even though they're lay people, this gets a huge reaction. Wow. Clearly, there's a lot of George's energy trapped in that, in that glass. So if I, lift it, if I lift off that saucer, the energy should disperse. And that bill will sink like a stone. Here we go. One, two, three. He wasn't quite dead, folks. He wasn't quite dead. <laughs> I wanted to clap anyway. You know, uh, you know, watching that, it, there's something that happens at the very beginning of that video that like shows you just how good he is, like how good of a writer he is. Like, let me just run this back because. I think it's interesting. Uh, he's got the best comedic timing of just about any magician. David Regal does. Check this out. It's the way he delivers this joke right here at the very beginning. So uh, let's do a little quiz. Who's on a dollar bill? I'm going to hold it down. Anyone know? Who's the president on the dollar bill? Um, um, Washington. 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 Thank you. And fun facts. I mean, we all learned about George Washington when we were like, and you can look at this, when we were... Uh, in elementary school. What are some of the fun facts? Like he could never tell a lie. That's very good. Cut down the cherry tree, good. Uh, wooden teeth, excellent. 
And when they buried him, he wasn't quite dead, right? Right there, that whole setup. And you it's really, it's a great comedic timing and it's a great setup for it. He does like three three real things and then a joke. I mean, it's a great study watching how he writes his routines. Uh, he's just got such good comedic timing. God, I love it so much. Maybe I'm maybe I liked it more than anyone else. I don't know. No, no, it's a very funny bit. You're totally right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, what do you think about this trick? You said it fooled you, Alex. You said you when you first saw it, it fooled you, huh? Well, yeah, because if you know what the sort of modus operandi is of something like this, there's nothing pointing to where any of it could be coming from or how any of it could be happening, and that to me is a really that's a skilled magician using a tool in a way that's even fooling the people that know what that tool is and that that to me that's 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 a special sign you know it's a sign of a, of a real pro and i i love it I, I i think that the whole thing really looks very mysterious and it doesn't seem like there's any way that he could possibly be doing anything to affect anything that's happening there and it's, it's great just a great piece we all know Right. Any any of the magicians listening. And I imagine that's who listens to us. We all know like that that is not the usual way you present that trick. Right. Mm -hmm. It is his own take on it. it's like and I think because of the way he chooses to present it, it's more fooling. I think. Well, he has that moment where he freezes everything in the glass and then he walks away and sits with the audience and that. Yeah. It's not usually possible with that kind of magic. And that's a real moment that he's creating there. And, and plus he's getting a laugh because people are giggling uncontrollably because they're like, what is happening? So it's it's a laugh because it's a joke and it's funny, but it's also a laugh because you're like, what is happening? My reality is being warped at this moment, you know? And it's yeah. it's really just got a lot going for it. It's a really, really good piece, good piece of magic. Really there's, a lot of great, there's a lot of great ways to create misdirection. Right. One of the best is a laugh. Yeah, no doubt. You get everyone to laugh. You can palm a small child. I mean, you can do yeah, right. <laughs> Sneak in an elephant. He's got some really funny, like he, because he's a comedy writer and he's written in, you know, TV shows and stuff. He has this really great presentational sense too. And he understands like comedy in this setting. And if you've never seen him in the magic castle, like if you're lucky enough to go to the magic castle and, and, and it's the week when Regal's in the close up room, like go see him. Cause you're going to, it's just going to be a real treat. Uh, he worked the last time I was uh, working there and he uh, worked like the late show. And, and I was just uh, um, amazed at how much, how bad he had those people just dying in that room. Much It's as much laughter as it is magic when you're watching him in a place like the castle where he can really spread his wings like that. It's there's no doubt. It's very cool. <laughs> well, that's it for David Regal today. Thanks for joining us. Do us a quick favor, click the follow or subscribe button so you'll be notified next time we go live, which will be in just a couple days. See you soon. Good afternoon, Stashmas. <laughs>